Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and today I'm excited to be coming at you with this new video. Today's video is all about the brush editor in Art Studio Pro 3.0. In today's video, we are going to go over each of the categories that you can find in the brush editor, and we're going to pick out some of the most important settings for you guys to become familiar with. We're not going to be able to go over every single setting, but we're going to be going over some of the most important ones. So there are two core settings in the general category that I want to go over. These are two of the most important settings when it comes to how your brush is going to work. Those two settings are flow and opacity. And we're going to go in here and we're going to change these settings around to see how this affects the brush. First, we're going to start with the flow. So flow deals with the amount of paint that is naturally on the brush. As you can see, when I lay down the strokes with flow set to 100%, when I push down with full pressure, I am getting 100% of the paint to come out. Now, when I drop it down a bit, you can see more gray is coming through. That means the less paint is coming through on the brush. As I knock it down even more, you can see even less paint is coming out. That's really the core basis of how flow works. You want to mess around with your flow and see how that affects and changes your brush result. So next up is opacity. And opacity deals with how opaque or how transparent the stroke is when you start laying down the paint. With 100% opacity, there is no transparency on the brush at all. As I knock this down, you'll start to see the brush becomes more transparent. In other words, you can actually see through the strokes that are being laid down here. As I lay the strokes down, you can see the other strokes behind it. And opacity allows you to build things up in this layered way. Now, both flow and opacity also directly link back to dynamics. And we're going to talk about dynamics a little bit later when we get to the end of the category. So keep in mind that your flow and opacity can also be directly influenced and changed by your dynamic settings. Okay, so our next category coming up is stamp, and these are basically your brush tip settings. Now, there's some important things I wanna go over in this category. We're gonna start with spacing. Now, spacing can be used for design of a brush, spacing can be used to change the result of your brush, and spacing can also be used to allow your brush to perform in different ways. You wanna mess around with your spacing and see how that changes the brush, see how it changes the result, and how it changes the feel. Now, we have a generator here which is going to generate either a circle, a square, or an image stamp. Basically, meaning that those are the three options you have when it comes to a brush tip in Art Studio Pro. Now, this brush in particular has an image stamp on it. When we click on image, you can see that within the software, we give a variety of unique stamps for you to mess around with, for you to put on brushes, for you to change on the brushes that are built into the software. So we give you guys a lot of stamps built in here. We're gonna change the stamp and you'll see that this is actually going to change the result of the brush. The squeeze settings are going to allow you to control how thick or thin your stamp is. So for example, when I change the squeeze setting here, if I knock the squeeze down, you'll see the brush begins to become thinner. When I knock it up, the brush becomes thicker. So your squeeze settings can also change and enhance your brush results. So our next category is pattern, and pattern is basically your brush's texture. As you can see, the brush we have selected here has a specific pattern on it, giving it the texture it has. If we click on pattern, you can see we can choose a variety of textures to add to the brush. So let's change this one, and we're gonna put another texture on the brush. When I lay it down, we're getting a different result. And we have a lot of pre-built patterns in here for you to give you a lot of ability with texture. When we resize the pattern scale, that makes the pattern 
or the texture actually larger. We give you a lot of different settings in the pattern category, allowing you to achieve a endless variety of results. Now, an important one here I wanna show you is the pattern opacity. When I knock it up, less of the pattern is going to show through. And when I knock it down, more of the pattern is going to show through on the brush. So this will enhance and increase the texture on your brush. So you wanna play with the opacity settings as well. And another really important one here is your blending mode when it comes to a texture or a pattern. The blending mode can give you a variety of different results. As you can see, this one here is set to linear height, and that pops the texture off the brush a bit more, giving it a more prominent effect. You can go through and check out each blending mode and check out how each mode changes the texture. So our next category is aux stamp. What does that mean? Well, that basically means double brush or double brush tip. This allows you to put another stamp on the brush for further customization. So as you can see, when I go in here, you can see we have our generator here of circle, square, or image. And you can see this particular brush is set to an image. So this means we have two stamps on this single brush. So this can add a lot of very cool effects and end results to a brush. So this brush right here in particular, let's lay some things down and let's see how it looks with the double stamp on. So as we lay something down here, you'll see we get a very interesting effect. And the double stamp is influencing the effect that we get here with this brush. And you can see here, when I change it to circle, it pretty much completely changes the look of the brush. So you can see how much the double stamp is affecting the result of the brush. And you can see when we take it off, how the brush changes. So it's a nice feature and it pretty much has all the same features you would find in the main stamp category. You have the ability to change the second stamp's blending modes to give you a variety of effects. And let's change the image stamp on here so you can see how this would change the result of the brush. So let's choose another stamp and see how that influences the result. So now, as I'm laying things down, the effect of the brush is different with the other stamp coming through. And with the variety of settings we have here, we can fine tune and adjust exactly how we want that secondary stamp to come through on the brush. So very cool option, that's what auxiliary stamp is. That basically means you get a secondary brush tip that you can put onto the brush. Okay, the next category up is jitter, and jitter basically allows you to randomize your brush stroke. Now, what would you use this for? Well, it can be used in a wide variety of different ways for different effects on a brush. Basically, jitter can allow you to roughen a brush up it can give you an effect as if the brush has texture on it without actually having to add a pattern to it. And you can utilize this for pencils, you can utilize this for paint brushes. It achieves a lot of great effects. And in Art Studio Pro, we have very deep settings when it comes to jitter. So you should go in and play around with these settings. You can change the scatter of your jitter on both the x-axis and the y-axis. And you can see how that changes things here when I drag the slider around. The most important thing to keep in mind with all of the settings that you're gonna find throughout the brush editor here, it's really all about experimentation. And you have to remember that this is a software made to recreate and mimic the analog tools that you would use in the real world. You have to think about these settings in context with actual art tools. And I think if you think about them in that way, this brush editor and all the categories in it will be a lot easier for you to understand. It all links back to achieving effects that the real world tools can achieve. 
Okay, the next category up is wetness. Now, this is a big setting for if you are using wet paintbrushes. In Art Studio Pro, we include many wet paintbrushes. And these are where all those settings are housed. Now, as you can see what the brush is doing here, you can see how wet this brush feels. You can see the way the brush is blending. There's some important settings in here I want to go over with you so you can better understand them. Blend transparency right now, I just switched to off. It was on full prior to that. Now, you can see when I'm off or if I go to weak, that changes the amount of blend that we get on the brush. Even if we go up to add, you can see it is not blending in the full way. So to get the maximum amount of blending on a brush, you wanna make sure blend transparency is set to full. Now, this brush is pretty wet, but we're gonna knock it up to 90 right now. And when I start laying down the strokes, you're gonna see it's even more wet. So you wanna play with the actual wetness settings because as you drop it down, the brush is gonna become more dry. As you go further up, it's gonna become more wet. And I think you can see here, some of these settings are pretty self-explanatory in what they do. If you go to 100%, the brush is gonna be 100% wet and the paint is going to feel that way. Now, another important setting here is blur radius. We talked about blur radius a while ago, back when we introduced it in 2.2. This is an important setting for your wet brushes to achieve a certain style of look and feel with the paint. It also determines how the techniques will be implemented that you want to implement with a particular brush. So when blur radius is turned off, we get a more soft style blend approach here. And you don't get the hardest of edges with this single brush. Things start to have more of an airbrush blend here. It's a lot softer and it achieves a different effect and it's all about preference here. But when we knock the setting up to flat, well, that gives us a totally different effect. So let's take the setting and let's go all the way up to flat. Now, we're going to do a quick render here and I'll show you the differences. You're going to see a different look in the render. And as I'm doing this, the paint feels differently as well. With flat blending, it allows you to achieve a more painterly look. It allows you to sculpt with the paint more. And it also allows you to have finer control over the edges you are trying to make with your brush strokes. I like to think of flat blending in terms of sculpting with the paint. And the difference in result and feel is pretty noticeable and you'll definitely notice that when you feel a brush that has flat blending on it compared to it being totally off and disabled. Okay, we are now on the last category, which is perhaps the most important category out of all, and that is dynamics. And within dynamics, there's a lot of settings here. This controls all the dynamics that are on a particular brush. We're gonna go over some specific settings here. Of course, we can't go over all of them, but we're gonna go over some of the most important ones in here. Now, one of the most important is size dynamics, along with opacity and flow dynamics. Those are the main three that we're gonna go over. Now, when we click on size, you can see that this brings up three options here, pressure, tilt, and velocity. These three options have pressure curve controllers on them. We are going to be going over pressure and tilt because those are most commonly found on most brushes. Let me resize the brush here so you can get a better visual when we start to change these settings around. So this is just a basic round brush. When I lay something down, you can see there's no dynamics on this brush. It is just totally flat. Now let's go into some of these settings and let's see how they change things. Okay, so let's start with size. We're gonna click on size and then we're gonna go to pressure. And what we're going to see when we click on pressure is our pressure curve. And this graph represents the pressure curve, meaning when we lay down our strokes in our Studio Pro, this 
controls the amount of pressure. We can set this to have a light feel. We can set this to have a more tight feel. So the amount of pressure that you're laying down from thick to thin, this curve is going to control that. As you can see, if I go up to the left, you can see how that makes the brush a bit fatter. When I go down, you can see that it's making the brush skinnier. And you can control various portions of the brush by adding points to the graph here and the curve. So you can see now the brush has a totally different look just from changing our pressure settings. Now this brush is not getting as small as I want it, as thin as I want it uh, with the graph alone. So I want to show you another important setting here and that is your minimum scale and that means the minimum size of the end of the brush. So as you see, when I changed that, now the brush became a lot sharper, which now gives me even more control when I go in and make my pressure curve adjustments here. You can now see how the results have changed that basic round brush that had no dynamics on it. Okay, the next thing we're going to show here is the tilt curve. And to do this, I wanna go to a pencil that has tilt on it. So we're gonna get back into our settings. We're going to go down to dynamic and we're gonna go back into size. And now we're going to go into the tilt curve. Now the tilt curve from a mathematics standpoint is set up differently than the pressure curve. It's basically flipped and mirrored when it comes to the settings. So as you can see here with this pencil, as I gradually tilt the pencil, the actual pencil, my tilt size increases. So when I render this ball here, when I start tilting the pencil in my hand, I am getting a larger size on that tilt. As I gradually keep tilting till all the way flat, the tilt becomes larger. And that is controlled by the mathematics in the pressure curve here. So let's see how it changes when I bring it up. So now when I tilt, I'm getting a less large result or a less gradual result as I continue to tilt the brush. And that's what this curve is controlling here. So you can see that when we are adjusting the graph here, we are mirrored compared to what we were doing with the adjustments with the pressure graph. You can see as I pulled it tighter, now it's a little bit more gradual. So you wanna play around with this and remember that this curve is the opposite of the pressure curve. You wanna go in the opposite direction to achieve your tilt results. Okay, so now we are going to get into opacity and flow dynamics. We're gonna pick this brush here, which has opacity dynamics turned on for pen pressure. So let's break this down. When I start laying down the stroke, you can see that the opacity is responding to my pen pressure, how hard or soft I am pushing down with the pencil. And that is mapped to the pressure curve here. You can see as I pull it down, the effect becomes greater. So now it is requiring that I push down harder to achieve full opacity on the brush. If we go back to the pressure curve and pull it down more, you can see how that is affecting the brush preview. And if I pull the curve up, it's going to require less pressure to achieve 100% opacity. So it's going to be the same concept for when we want to add flow dynamics to a brush to be controlled by pressure. So we're going to take this basic brush and we're going to put flow dynamics on it. When we apply these flow dynamics, when we adjust the graph, you're going to see here that when I put it on, when I pull it down, the effect is not going to be as great as I want it to be. So I'm pulling it down here and you can see it's not really uh, changing too much. So we have to go back into general and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the overall flow down to about 50% here. And now my control through pressure is going to be greater. So now when I adjust the pressure curve, it's going to be more prominent. So you can start to see the changes that are being made on the brush as we adjust the graph around. But I wanna have an even greater effect, even more control. So I'm gonna drop down the flow to about 25%. 
Now I'm going to go back in and now you can see we have even greater control over the flow. Now if we want, we can even turn opacity dynamics on at the same time to achieve an even greater effect. And that holds true for any of the dynamics that you can put on the brush. You can put all of these dynamics on simultaneously. All right guys, that is going to wrap up today's video on the brush editor. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it would be great if you can give a thumbs up if you can drop a comment if you can share it with a friend and it would also be great if you can subscribe to the channel thank you guys for tuning in we will be back soon we hope you have a great holiday stay well